O'Rourke received a lot of criticism from the right wing when it came to his proposal to buy back certain assault weapons. Now he's receiving criticism from the left as well, including from Democratic leadership like Chuck Schumer. Now before I get to their quotes, I just want to remind you all of what I believe was Beto O'Rourke's strongest moment in the debates. Take a look. You know, the critics call this confiscation. Are you proposing taking away their guns and how would this work? I am, if it's a weapon that was designed to kill people on a battlefield. If the high impact, high velocity round, when it hits your body, shreds everything inside of your body because it was designed to do that so that you would bleed to death on a battlefield and not be able to get up and kill one of our soldiers. When we see that being used against children, and in Odessa, I met the mother of a 15 year old girl who was shot by an AR 15. Mm -hmm. And that mother watched her bleed to death over the course of an hour because so many other people were shot by that AR 15 in Odessa and Midland. There weren't enough ambulances to get to them in time. Hell yes, we're going to take your AR 15, your AK 47. We're not going to allow it to be used against our fellow Americans anymore. So it's amazing because honestly, no one was talking about better work at all. At all, like he had to relaunch his campaign because no one was talking about him. And then he gives this unapologetic strong answer defending his proposal and everyone's talking about him now. I thought that was a great moment for him, but it turns out that not only are Republicans going after him for it, you have members of the Democratic Party going after him, including leadership like Senator Chuck Schumer. Yo, of course, yeah. of course, the surrender Democrats are here to give away any momentum we had. So for instance, Chuck Schumer said, quote, I don't know of any other Democrat who agrees with Beto O'Rourke, but it's no excuse not to go forward, right? Okay, so yeah, 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 Chuck, uh, here we go. Uh, I agree with Beto O'Rourke. Uh, did you hear that crowd? They agree with Beto O'Rourke. I bet you if you polled uh, Democratic voters, they agree with Beto O'Rourke. The only people who don't agree with Beto O'Rourke are corporate Democrats like you who love to surrender to Republicans. They love to surrender to Republicans because they're afraid of Republicans. And you're gonna notice that in some of the other quotes I give you. So uh, there's Senator Chris Coons. A day after the debate, uh, Senator Coons warned that O'Rourke's proposal would be quote, played for years at Second Amendment rallies with organizations that try to scare people by saying that Democrats are coming for your guns. <laughs> it's what? so funny, you know, you know, you won't talk about scared, you're scared. Exactly. You're scared, Oh my God, what are the Republicans gonna say about me? Hey, I don't know if you know this, you also have a mouth, you could also say something about them. But instead, you're using all your firepower against a fellow Democrat. By the way, what happened to unity? Oh, it's only if you take a corporate position that we have to unity, do unity behind you. You take a position that's strong and progressive, all of a sudden, no unity, got, screw Beto O'Rourke, we're all against them. It's this, by the way, let's take a quick note of Chris Coons, this so called Democrat, right? That I'm supposed to unify behind. So, uh, number one, he just said, no, 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 I'm so afraid of Republicans. We shouldn't do, do anything about AR 15s and AK 47s. Number two, he came out the other day and said, oh, we gotta go to war with Iran. If Trump and Saudi Arabia want us to go to war, we gotta go to war, right? He went on Fox News to say that. Yes. Okay, am I supposed to unify behind that? Why doesn't Chris Coons unify behind progressives? So, and then lastly, you know what else Chris Coons does? He's the national chair of the prayer breakfast. So these are religious fundamentalist nuts that go around the world trying to ban homosexuality. And in some cases, even the death sentence for homosexuality. Like in, in countries yeah. like Uganda, they pushed for that. And TYT investigates has broken other stories about how they were involved with the Russians. Check that out on TYT.com. And Chris Coons is like, these are my fundamentalist friends. No, Chris Coons is not my colleague. He's not a colleague of any progressive. His job is to sell us out to Republicans. And then you have Pete Buttigieg, Pete Buttigieg said over the weekend that he thinks the Texas Democrat played into the GOP's hands with his comments. Again, more fear about the right wing, what, what are, what's the GOP gonna do, what's the GOP gonna say? And then you have a member of the GOP who is labeled incorrectly, Senator Joe Manchin. He's <laughs> supposedly a Democrat, but he told reporters that O'Rourke is quote, not taking my guns away from me when asked about the program. And here's a direct quote, Beto's one human being, he gave his own opinion, okay? I think it was very harmful to make it look like all the Democrats. I can tell you one thing, Beto O'Rourke's not taking my guns away from me, you tell Beto that, okay? 
Now, Beto knows about this, knows about the resistance he's receiving in his own party. And he was asked about it during an interview with Chris Cuomo on CNN. And I liked his response, take a look. What you said plays right to the heart of fear of people who don't wanna give on any of this. Beto, they're working a deal hard. I've been talking to Democrats that are involved with it. They felt they were getting somewhere. They don't feel that you helped because you played into the fear of a slippery slope. Universal background checks, red flag laws, fixing NICs, making it more info shared, doing real things. They may not be able to get it done if people are worried about confiscation. Listen, if they had made some progress already, I might buy that argument, but Many of those Democrats are, are complicit in what we see right now. I mean, the Republicans are the most obstinate and the most obstructionist and the most in the pockets of, of the NRA. But it's been a bipartisan problem that the Centers for Disease Control couldn't even study gun violence. True. That here we are in 2019 and we still don't have universal background checks or red flag laws, or we allowed the assault weapons ban to expire even though it did so much good and saved so many lives. So this old policy and tactic of relying on polls and allowing the NRA to set the terms of the debate no longer works for me and no longer works for this country. Yeah, that's a great answer yeah. by Beto. So look, I feel kind of proud to be honest uh, on my analysis of this from day one. Look, I told you Beto was a mixed bag. When he went with the Obama consultants, it was a disaster for him. We said it was gonna be and it was and he dove in the polls. Uh, he went from being a, a, a running as a clean candidate, no corporate PAC, etc. He still runs on no corporate PACs, but he, he made a wrong decision. But I told you, he like he actually has good instincts, right? And so here's his good instincts coming out. And so he's a mixed bag and I'm glad he's in the race. Cory Booker is very similar. Some things where I go, ah, God, I wish he hadn't done that, but some things that he does great, right? Other people like Buttigieg coming in talking, oh, yeah, I know Norwegian and I know Farsi. Uh, and then backing a lot of conservative talking points. Yeah. And here he is again on an issue that matters a lot. Oh, yeah, we're, you know, I'm scared of Republicans. And so, uh, you know, I, I don't want to take uh, their AR 15s away. I mean, fear, we're talking about fear. The real fear that the uh, American voters have is that their kids are gonna get shredded by an AR-15. Yeah, and it's it's not as if there haven't been, there's been a ban on assault weapons before, right? In, in the state of California, for instance. So it's not like we're talking about something out of control. It's never happened, this is unprecedented. It is a gun buyback program specifically for weapons of war. Yeah. So I, I don't I don't know, like, Again, when you have a party that operates from this foundation of fear, they're never gonna get anything done. They're always gonna concede to their political opponents. And it's frustrating. And I really do commend Beto in this particular instance. And he should keep going in this direction. Because when you're unapologetic, when you're strong, that gives people something to vote for, something to support. When you come from a place of weakness, who wants to support that? I'm not gonna go to the polls and vote for that. Yeah, look, Buttigieg constantly back in these Republican talking points, and 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 totally ignoring the African American community and uh, in South, South Bend, Bend, fire, you know, demoting the black police chief, systematically removing them, etc. Go to tyt.com, check out the tyt investigative stories about him, and you begin to sense that get a sense of who he is. Last thing on this, um, the thing I cannot abide is Democrats pretending that they were about to have a deal with Mitch McConnell. Oh my God, if it wasn't for Beto O'Rourke, the Republicans were gonna do a deal and we were gonna get real gun control in this country. And you know what that means? That means they were, if there was gonna be any deal at all, they were gonna give McConnell everything he wanted. It was gonna be the weakest, worst gun control law you've ever seen in your life. But it was gonna give political cover to McConnell and the Republicans and Donald Trump to say, hey, we did it. We did a gun control. Uh, look, hey, so you can't say blame me for all the violence anymore because yeah. I did the weakest thing in the world. So, and oh, boo hoo. Hey, Chuck Schumer, I thought you were a master legislator along with Nancy Pelosi. So, what now? Because a one thing that one out of 24 candidates said, you can't make a deal anymore, then I guess you suck at your job. And come on, I was about to appease McConnell, but Beto ruined it. No, that's actually, a poster like child for. I shouldn't have the job of Democratic leader anymore. One important piece, vital piece of information uh, to really buttress your point. Earlier this week, there was a story out about how McConnell uh, proposed some gun legislation, not to the Senate, to NRA reps. 
And all it was gonna do was offer some background checks and the NRA is like, no. And he scrapped it. Yeah, and then they turn around and go, oh, we were gonna do it, but because of Beto, we're not going to. No, you're not gonna do it because the NRA owns you. Yes. And that's why you're not gonna do it. And what does a stupid ass Chuck Schumer do? He comes out and he's like, oh, it's Beto's fault. No, you idiot, it's McConnell's fault. You're so bad at politics. He goes around the country, Chuck Schumer, saying, who's the richest? Who's the richest? I'm gonna have them run for Senate because I think Americans love the elite. Idiot doesn't know anything about politics. Like what you see, click the subscribe button below and don't forget to ring the bell to never miss another video from the Young Turks.